In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the eraser tool. The eraser tool is located on the left side. It looks like kind of one of those big rubber erasers, and it's connected to a couple of other possible tools, such as the scissor tool and knife tool. The scissor tool and the knife tool are a little bit complicated, so we're not going to talk about those too much. Uh, and particularly, I think the eraser tool is a good one because it does pretty much the same things as the scissor and uh, knife tool. They're just a little bit more specific given what you may or may not want to try to do. In Illustrator, the quick button for this is Shift E. Unlike Photoshop that is only E, there's a different tool that uses E in Illustrator, so Shift E is what they use. And we can see that we have our eraser, and it looks like just a little like brush circle. And as I click and drag, it erases and creates two different shapes. And we can see that now I have one shape and I have a second shape, and they are separated from each other because I erased the two from each other. If I want to size this up and down, you have to use the left and right bracket keys to make it smaller or larger um, according to what kind of size you want it to be. Another possibility is if we come over to the far right side under the properties, we can come to the tool options and it'll give us another pop-up window in which we can ask it to change the angle, the roundness, and play around with the size. But it's easiest just to remember the bracket keys. Since we don't do so much raster style blending and erasing with lower opacities in Illustrator, it doesn't show up as the options in the top. You'll have to get used to remembering the bracket keys. But the eraser tool will erase through every object in its path, and you can see that it's cut these different objects into separate pieces. This one still moves together since I had it grouped, but we can see that it has a gap in it. And if I put objects on top of each other and then use the erase tool, you can see that it has erased away from the different tools, uh, from the different shapes. Uh, they're still their separate sort of shapes, but um, you can see that some things sometimes get a little bit warped since they become new shapes. We can see that the anchors here got a little bit out of sync, but that's okay. We'll put them back uh, using Command Z to kind of replace them. Another thing to note is that when I uh, use the eraser tool and erase, you can see that it restructures the shape. Since that shape no longer has this space, the stroke follows where the new outline is. And if I cut it into two separate shapes, you can see that each of those shapes has their own stroke and fill that I can, uh, I can adjust according to however it is that I want to. Something that's very helpful to know with the eraser tool, particularly is that you can combine it with the use of the selection tool. Right now, I have no object selected. And so when I use the eraser tool, it will erase from every object in its path. But if I select one object, so I selected this front object, and now I'm going to use the eraser tool, even though it looks like it draws over all of it, when I let go, it will only erase from the object I have selected. And we can see straight through to the object behind. So that is a smart way to combine your uses of tools so that you can uh, isolate where you want to erase from um, and not erase from other objects. So that is the eraser tool.